So I didn't mention this before because, well, frankly, I, I wasn't sure if it was gonna work, but with January now over and the results being final, I now feel confident sharing this experience with you. So this has been a popular topic recently. The, the, idea, of, the idea of doing something outside your normal mode of operation for 30 days in order to achieve a positive result, whether that's taking cold showers for 30 days or meditating for 30 days, running, or, or maybe just waking up an hour earlier for 30 days, all in the name of self-improvement. So throughout 2023, I had developed a nasty habit with my photography, which was progressively getting worse. And I came to the conclusion that I had to change something. Something had to be done about it. So I decided to, to make a change for the first 30 days of the year to see if I could break this habit I had really unknowingly created. So I organized this video into four simple parts, the problem, the cause, the solution, and the results. So be sure to stick around for the results. It was as the, the results are really enlightening to say the least, not what I was expecting, but something that I will most definitely continue to do moving forward. So the problem, here is the problem that I had encountered. And it took a little while to, de to develop and for me to, I guess, recognize this problem. So when you're a beginner in photography, you take a ton of photos. And then as you progress throughout your photographic journey, your skill sets improve and you start to take less photos, that's generally the way these things work. It's definitely the, the case for me. When I was in my first year of photography, I, take, I took a ton of photos. As my skill set got better, the amount of photos I would take on location at a given, uh, on a given day was steadily going down. And that's kind of this the, the normal way things go. And what I started to notice in 2023 is that the number of photos I was taking was actually increasing. And I didn't notice it in January of last year or even Q1 last year. It really wasn't until my trip to the Dolomites in October of last year that I really started to, to realize that this was a trend through all of last year. And the, the number of photos that I was throwing away or my discard rate was actually getting higher too. It wasn't that I was creating more keepers, if that was the case, and then shoot away. But I was taking more photos, throwing more photos away, but really keeping the same amount of uh, what they call keepers. You know, those, those photos that you are super proud of, the best of the best, the ones you put on your website, the ones that you, you deem portfolio worthy. That number wasn't increasing. So I wasn't really sure exactly what was happening here, but I do know that I was spending more time than ever culling through these photos. I'd get back from a trip and spend just so much time just getting rid of all of the, the noise, so much trash, just trying to figure out you know, where the gold was, where were the best photos. And there, honestly, there wasn't uh, as many as, uh, well, there's never as many as you hope, but I noticed that the number of keepers was really the, staying the same, but the number of photos was getting higher and higher and higher. And what I noticed was, and it took a while to figure this out, is that so many of these extra photos were those just-in-case photos, those photographs where I would take something on location. I didn't really love the scene, but I would take it just in case. Maybe I'll like it later. And what would happen is I would go, I would get back home from my trip, I would review those photographs, and I know that they were just in case photos, but I didn't even know why I even took those photos. Like what was the just in case there? So I had that mentality and the cause was, the cause that I think of this problem is that I started to use digital photography is kind of like a crutch to be sloppy. You know, I'm sure you've heard this um, before, maybe you've heard it on location if you're shooting with friends that we're not shooting film here, just shoot away. SD cards are cheap, just photograph everything and figure it out later. Now I do think that like when you're focus stacking a scene, yeah, you gotta take that same scene many times or maybe you're trying to photograph um, moving waves or maybe there's water moving in, out of, in and out of your scene. And yes, you, you gotta photograph that many times. But what was happening was I was becoming very lazy on location and to the point to where I would just photograph just for the sake of photographing, just photograph anything that I thought might be okay because I had the mentality of just figure it all out later. So I was lazy on location. I was losing focus when I was in the field and I was creating very lazy compositions as well. And I think the biggest struggle for me is that I had that in my mind that it's, it's all just digital photos, Mark. Just, just you have an endless amount of room on your SD card, so just shoot away and just figure it all out later. So the solution that I had come up with is to limit the amount of photos that I was taking just like I was using, just like I was using film. So not rely so much on digital photography, even though I was using a digital camera, of course, but just to, to photograph like a roll of film. So what I decided to do is limit my, my photographs to 36 images 
when I always go out to a specific location, which if you think about it, 36 photos is more than enough to, to capture um, a, a, a scene. You know, he, this is some of my photos that I captured on my recent uh, Lofoten trip that I was really, really happy with. And what's so interesting about this when, it, when I get to the results section is that the, the actual number of photos that I took on this Lofoten workshop that I just got back from versus the workshop I did last January, the amount of photos, the, the disparity between the two is pretty interesting. But I wanted to limit how many photos that I was taking to 36. And ideally, if you wanna do this kind of challenge at home, if you can find an SD card, a very, very small SD card, this is actually an old one of mine of four gigabytes, and this would works, works perfect, because with my camera that I shoot with, the uh, GFX 100S, this will only hold less than really 400 photos. So you could do it that way if you wanna do it at home. But what I did is I basically just looked on the back of my camera, and if I was, uh, however many photos I had left on that SD card, I just subtract 36 from that, and I knew that that was the bogey. That was the mark that I could get to. If I went beyond that, Mark, I had failed. But ultimately, what this made me do is very, very simple. It's just to make every shot count. Make every single shot count. So I got some uh, results to show you here real quick. So let me come up here to import and close this down. This is my Lofoten workshop last year. And I won't wait, to, I won't keep you online here while this all loads. But you can see right here, 1,000. 153 photos total was captured on my Lofoten workshop in 2023. Now the same workshop in 2024, 376 photos of which of these 376 photos, I already showed you, let me just uh, hit cancel here real quick. I already showed you four of these photos from that trip that I'm pretty happy with. And I know that there's at least one other photo, maybe two other photos that I would deem keepers. So we're looking at between maybe five or six keepers out of the 376 photos that I captured on this tour. And what's so funny is in 2023, when I ran the same uh, Winter Aurora workshop in the Lofoten Islands, took almost 1,200 photos, and it came away with five that I processed fully, and I deemed the best ones for, uh, in, that, uh, in that time frame that I was there. Now, I, I know every trip is a little bit different, but I think that you would be, you would agree that the difference between almost 1,200 and less than 400, that is a massive difference. And when I took less than 400 on my most recent trip, the weather conditions weren't even as good as they were last year, but I actually came away with more keeper photos with less. So a lower discard rate, higher keeper rate. And I attribute that to one main thing. And it's really that when you know you only have so many photos, so if you had this four gigabyte SD card in your camera, you know that you're probably gonna get less than 400 photos or right around 400 photos. And when you know that the amount of images that you take is limited and every single shot counts, you photograph things a little bit differently. So it made me much more purposeful when I was on location. And I actually did this too before I went to the Lofoten Islands. That was a uh, like a week and a half trip. I also went to the Blue Ridge Mountains in uh, beginning of January, or I guess mid-January before I left. Did the same exact thing. Very low number of photos taken, higher keeper rate, lower discard rate. And I attribute that to being more purposeful when you're on location. I was more focused on what I was doing. I was more focused on the changing conditions. I wasn't just, just photographing constantly. I was just kind of get a composition perfect really refine it, really get into what I was doing. You might have heard things called the flow state before, and that's really, in layman's terms, it's when you just become so engrossed in what you're doing that you are just so dialed in. And by limiting your photographs, just like you're using film, is a great way to do that. And, and something else that I didn't even think about is my battery life. This is kind of a small thing, but I took four batteries on my trip to the Lofoten Islands, never charged one of them. Brought my chargers and everything, never charged one battery. Not a big thing, but I, it was definitely something that I took notice of. At the end of the trip, I was like, I never even pulled out the chargers or anything, never had to charge a single battery. I was very cognizant of what I was doing. So I found it very easy to, to kind of get into the zone. If you see me keep looking off camera, I just got notes here that I'm trying to, because I don't want to forget anything. But I remember being so focused on the end result, so focused on what I was hoping to achieve that it really made me just more dialed in. And every single time I hit that shutter button, it was very purposeful. I wanted to make sure that this was something that would really count to make every single image I, I took count. 
So I found that to be very, very interesting. I definitely wanted to share it with you all here today as well. It, uh, it was, I, these are the results that I was hoping for but I wasn't really prepared for how many keepers. Now I know keepers is kind of a subjective thing, but I didn't think that I would create more better photos. I really felt that I would just be kind of more dialed in. I just wouldn't take as many photos. I wouldn't have to just kind of discard as many, as much as I, I was last year. So I think I kind of figured out what my issue was last year. I was just spraying and praying, just photographing it all, figuring it all out later. But now I think if I just kind of stick to this, and you don't have to do it exactly like a roll of film. If you just want to be more cognizant of every single photo that you're taking, this would definitely help. But it just really got me to be a little bit more dialed in when I was on location. If I only had so many photographs to capture, I mean, let's face it, I, use, I shoot with 256 gigabyte uh, SD cards. I can take thousands of photos on one of these SD cards and, and, and still have room for more usually. And when you have that, you just, you, you, could, you just can just keep hitting those shutter buttons over and over and over again, and it's very easy to get a little bit lazy, to get a little bit sloppy. So I wanted to share that experience with you here today. If you have any questions about uh, what I did with the, uh, the kind of shoot like film on a digital camera challenge for 30 days, please leave those in the comment section below, and I'll do my best to, to get back in touch with you as soon as I possibly can. And I really do hope you enjoyed this week's video as well. I'm excited to kind of dive through some of these photographs. Uh, I really like this one as well. Uh, all of these photos and just kind of see what I did come up with. Like I mentioned, I think there's two more that I don't have in here yet that uh, are going to come out of this uh, trip I just got back from uh, yesterday, actually. And uh, so I'm still feeling a little bit jet lagged, but I'm excited to, uh, to kind of dive into these and uh, see what I come up with. So as always, I really do appreciate you carving out a little bit of time to spend it with me here today. If you did enjoy this week's video, if you could give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And as always, I really do appreciate you uh, spending some time with me here today, and I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye.